Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial by the Minecrafters. This is Captain Jack and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about genetics which is one of Binny's mods. Alright before we get started let's take a look at the random information board. Captain Jack's bee breeding guide is first on the list and that is a seven part tutorial series on how to breed bees. All the way from uh, finding bees to crossbreeding bees um, to building alviaries and uh, genetics and so on and so forth. Um, it's a big guide and if you want to know how the basics of uh, the bee bee breeding um, situation goes, then check out episodes one through five of that series. Once you hit episode six, where I start, talk, start talking about genetics, well, things have changed a lot. And uh, that's where this tutorial comes into play because uh, since things are so different, it requires an entirely different tutorial. Now, Forestry for Minecraft is a large um, large mod, or I like to call it kind of a compilation of different mods. We have uh, Binny's mods here that I've listed, Extra Bees, Extra Trees, Botany, and Genetics, and there's also Binny Core, uh, and I kind of threw in there Butterflies too because, you know, Butterflies are part of this. So we'll be talking about um, items from all of those different um, sub-mods, if you will, um, all again by Binny, and I will throw the wiki link in the description below if you uh, have any maybe questions about any of those mods there, although some of, uh, especially the genetics, um, some of the wikis are not quite fully compiled yet, and there's not a lot of information on them, which is why I'm making this tutorial for you guys. Um, subtopics, uh, multi-farms and tree breeding. I'm not really going to um, go fully delve into multi-farms and uh, what their capabilities are and what they can do, but they will be really important um, to this new genetics mod. Um, for more reasons than just the tree breeding below, um, you're going to need a lot of, uh, what do you need, uh, wheat, and sugar and the multi farms are a great way to get that and also we're going to be talking about tree breeding a little bit because we're going to need some uh, sweet chestnuts that's just the easiest tree that i found um, with the with the highest yield or the most results and uh, papayas for some fruit juice so let's get started all right i'm going to touch on the multi farm first and uh, just so you guys are aware i'm not going to go into a lot of information on this or i'm not really going to tell you exactly how to do everything that you need to do to make a multi farm because there's a lot of information out there already on these things and this is not really the point of this tutorial the point is genetics i'm just showing you the multi farm because it's an awesome tool that you're going to need to make a lot of the stuff that's from genetics okay from the multi farm what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a ton of wheat and you're going to want to make a bunch of sugar cane because we're going to need sugar. Um, we're also going to need paper a little bit farther on. Um, you're going to need wood. You're going to need, uh, um, I just put in chestnut wood here because uh, this is the tree that I'm going to recommend that you go for. Um, chestnut trees are sweet chestnuts. And uh, you're going to need some papaya. So the papayas are going to get us fruit juice. The chestnuts are going to get us a lot of seed oil, which is going to be really important. And then these things are going to be used for something else. Now, um, I'll, again, I'll throw a link for uh, farm multi-block structure setups in the description below. Um, there are already a lot of videos out on them. Sorry, I never made one. Um, but what you do here is basically you set up your farm um, to make whatever you want, and it grows in different quadrants here. So the north quadrant is red, south over here is, uh, is yellow, and then east and west. And this is the pattern of how it will plant once you have your multi-farm up and running. Now, what the multi-farm does is is allows you to specify which quadrant of your farm does certain things. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a soldering iron, you're going to need uh, probably an intricate circuit board, and uh, one of these electron tubes. And I'll show you real quick how to uh, set up your multi-farm. Um, you're going to click right-click with the soldering iron in your inventory, and uh, all these different electron tubes are going to do different things. So, oops, we want to switch over to, let's say, a manual farm. And if I put an iron one in there, we'll make a vegetable. Diamantine will make a reed farm, so that'll get us our sugar cane. Um, golden electron tube, uh, that's for cactus, the succulent farm. Um, crop farm, this will get us our wheat. And then finally, I think you have to set this up separately, an orchard. And what an orchard does, it's really cool. Basically, once you grow a tree there, it will harvest the fruit of the tree and suck it down in through the farm multi-block, and you will get a whole bunch of stuff. And the orchard is what you're going to use to um, harvest your papayas and stuff, okay? So once you have it set up the way you want, you're going to go ahead and drop it up here. It's going to have it specified exactly all the things that you just set. Okay. Take your soldering iron, right click to get that one out of there. We're going to put this one inside of here and you see that we have our vegetable farm, um, our orchard, our reed farm, and our manual farm. And the farm block is going to require a steady source of water, power, and also fertilizer. And this thing will automatically plant stuff all over the place. So. The uh, papaya tree here with the uh, papayas that you'll need from them and the chestnuts here with the chestnuts that you'll need from this tree 
will help us get seed oil and fruit juice. Fruit juice is not actually necessary, but it's good to have. And this will uh, start us on our next portion of the tutorial. All right, now before we really get into this, I want to make sure that uh, this is very clear. Um, the genetics mod is basically a mod that allows you to genetically modify trees, flowers, bees, and butterflies and uh, inoculate them with different traits that you desire or wish to have. Now, on that premise, I'm going to go on the assumption that if you're watching this video, you already know how to breed trees, you already know how the crossbreeding um, path works, you already know what you're doing with bees, and uh, now you want to find out how to genetically modify them. And we're going to have to kind of start really, really way far back here at square one before we get there. Um, but again, I will be assuming a base knowledge of bee breeding, and if you're not sure um, about how to do that, make sure you check out uh, my guide to bee breeding episode one through five. All right, our first quest is going to be to get ethanol, and we're going to need a fermenter. And inside the fermenter, you're going to put fertilizer here and a sapling here. Now, I've done two things here. I put water in this one. This machine's going to require water and power. And if you put one sweet chestnut sapling inside here, you're going to get 200 or you're going to get, uh, uh, what was it, 200, 500 uh, millibuckets of biomass, okay? And there was already some uh, fertilizer in there. Okay, so if I put another one in there, it's going to bring us up to 1,500, okay? So that's great. So we're going to use um, saplings, preferably from um, extra trees, because I don't even think you can use the um, vanilla ones anyways. Um, the, the better the sapling, the more biomass you're going to get from each one. And the sweet chestnuts get a lot of biomass um, per squeeze as opposed to the base trees. And uh, this is probably all like the best tree that you'll need. It's not that far down the chain. And uh, this is going to be good all around again for that wood, the chestnuts, the seed oil, and so on and so forth. That's why I'm recommending sweet chestnuts. Now, another thing that you can do is you can use that fruit juice that you got from your papaya. So all you got to do is run a papaya through a squeezer, put it inside of here, and uh, let me go ahead and grab these out of here. And for every one sapling, you're going to get 750 instead. So you're going to get 250 millibuckets more per squeeze if you use the fruit juice inside the fermenter. And that's going to give us this stuff called biomass. Now, what do you do with the biomass? Well, you put it inside a still. And provided the still has power, you pipe it right in there. You can use, um, you can also use cans of, of biomass if you don't want to pipe it directly. But you put it in here. The still is going to... Uh, Smush it down into ethanol. It's going to take a little while, and ethanol is going to be extremely important a little bit later on. All right, this next part, uh, hopefully it won't confuse you too much, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a whole bunch of different things that, again, we're going to use a little bit later on. We've already made ethanol. Now we got to make a whole other bunch of, of crap before we can move on. You're going to need incubators, and you're going to need a bunch of them, and the incubator is made by a bunch of different things here. That's great. Um, and you can also make different types of uh, incubators. One's powered by EU, one RF, and one MJ. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make growth medium. Now, growth medium is simply bone meal and sugar together. It will give you two growth medium. You're going to throw that inside an incubator along with some water, and it is going to smush it down into liquid growth medium. What you want to do with your liquid growth medium next is put it inside another incubator, and in this incubator, we are going to put wheat, and this is going to ferment it down into bacteria. Once you have bacteria, there's a few things that we're going to do with it, okay? So I got a bucket of bacteria here, and we got three more incubators here. The first one we're going to put inside an incubator along with some sugar, and that is going to give us enzymes. We're going to need enzymes a little bit later on. There's one, okay? So that's going to make enzymes. In order to make polymerizing bacteria, you're going to need to throw um, some bacteria along with bone meal, okay, inside of here, and that's going to make polymerizing bacteria. We'll need that later on. And finally, bacteria vector, and you're going to need another incubator, um, and you're going to need to put that stuff inside of here to make bacteria vector. And finally, I have this listed as semifinals because this is like one of the last things. This is like the final step in this entire process, and we will come back to that, but you will need more growth medium um, inside an incubator to do something else a little bit special. If you don't want to pipe your fluids um, throughout different uh, pipes or whatever, test racks, um, you can pipe them into bottlers and you can use these glass cylinders from the genetics mod inside a bottling machine and you can bottle up all your stuff and use that to put in your machines instead of using the pipe. So that's just another option there. All right, real quickly before we move on, I just want to show you these databases. We have the Apirus database made in a carpenter with water, the gene da database made the same way. Um, arborist database and uh, the botanist database. So we got flowers, trees, genes, or genetics, and we have bees. And by the, made the same way, I just mean made in a carpenter 
with power and water. Now, we have the master databases in the back here, and those can only be spawned in creatively, so do not try to make them. There is no recipe for them. But we have these simple databases here. And uh, what I did was I have a lab stand, and uh, let me go ahead and grab a database here for bees, okay? You can hold these, and you can open them up, and you can look inside, and you can see all the bees that we've bred up to. Um, this is a creative world, and I've only spawned in a few bees, so this doesn't make any sense. Normally, you'd see the noble and um, majestic and so on and so forth, and common and cultivated yada yada if you right click on a lab stand it puts it in here and it just kind of hangs out there and it has a cool little animation and you can check and see what's inside of it so that's the lab stand and the databases now this database here um, is going to be probably the most important one and we can see all of our different uh, genes that we've isolated for different types of uh, things and species here i haven't done any with uh, trees and this stuff yet but we will don't worry um, and these are the um, genetic traits that I have yanked out in this little tutorial. So the gene um, gene bank is going to be pretty important uh, moving forward. It's actually going to be a middle step in the actual inoculation process. And so these are the databases and these are how you can kind of place them in the world. All right, now unfortunately before moving on any farther really you have to have an alveary. And anyone who's ever um, built up to an alveary knows that just getting this block alone, this multi-block alone, is a long time long, long, long process, ton of resources. And very quickly, let me just go you over um, how to get it. We're going to need more of that seed oil. And uh, we're going to put that into a carpenter along with some wood. And we're going to make impregnated casings. Next, we're going to need some liquefied honey. So in order to do that, we're going to throw honey inside of the squeezer. And we're going to throw that into a carpenter along with some royal jelly, some pollen, beeswax, and uh, planks. And that's going to give us some scented paneling. And um, eight scented paneling surrounded by an impregnating casing will give us one alveary block. Now, the reason why we need to make an alveary is because we need something new and something that uh, probably you haven't seen before. And these are called larvae. Okay. All the mundane ones are uh, will show up in NEI. All the larvae for the different uh, species will not show up in NEI. Uh, but we're going to need a hatchery. And in order to make a hatchery, um, this is the pattern right here. You're going to need an alveary block, some glass panes, a diamantine electron tube. And in order to make the diamantine electron tube, you're going to need a thermionic fabricator. Thermionic fabricator. Okay, and that's a bunch of diamonds along with some melted glass. Squishy, squishy. And we're going to get one of these. So uh, we need these larvae because it's actually not even possible to directly inoculate princesses and drones anymore. Um, which is a source, source of huge contention of mine. But in any case, I'll save my opinions for the end of the tutorial. But yes, you will need an alveary. And uh, the more of these you get, the easier that it will be. Uh, but these will make literally a ton of larvae. You do not have to worry about getting these quickly. They will just pour in way faster than you will ever want to use them. All right, so you got your alveary. You got your bees ready that you want to uh, isolate the traits from. We have uh, the rain that started that I'm getting rid of. Um, you have your, your farm, you have all the liquids that we already learned how to make. Let's finally start inoculating these bees, okay? And this is quite the process. Um, let me just show you a few of the things that we'll be needing. We'll be needing blank sequences, um, empty serum vials. You can use empty serum arrays if you choose. If you choose this stuff called DNA dye and fluorescent dye, okay? These are pretty simple. This is where you'll need that paper that I talked about already. And now you just need some golden glass panes for these and a whole bunch of empty serum vials to make this. Okay, fluorescent dyes, uh, some, some of this. This is some of this. Okay, very good. We got what we need. Let's go ahead and make an isolator. And the isolator basically isolates different traits from anything that you choose. Now, right here, I have a butterfly in here and I am isolating a trait from a butterfly. Um, there's these here, and this is from the botany mod. You can't use like vanilla flowers or flowers from other mods. It needs to be a flower from the botany mod, um, or botanist, whatever it is. Um, and then we can, we can do saplings. So, um, we can isolate bees, butterflies, flowers, or trees in the isolator here. And, uh, what you will need is some enzymes. Okay. So now we're putting some more of these enzymes to use here. You're going to need to put your blank sequences here. And uh, whatever you want to um, search for traits from in this side here. So you got a little GUI here. you got a place we'll, where they'll end up. And then once this is done isolating, as you can see, it takes a very long time. Um, they will come over here. And we have some arborists. And that's because I've already isolated some traits off of a tree. And then um, an apiarist. And this is from a bee. And you can see that in the tooltip there, it says it's very faint, it's unsequenced, and it's unknown. So this is isolating different traits from these things here. Now, what do we do 
with the DNA sequences once we have them. We are going to put them inside an analyzer. Now, if I mouse over this, you'll notice that it says very faint, unknown, unsequenced. So we have this, this trait from, um, this is from a bee, so we have a trait from a bee, but we have no idea what it is, which is great. So what we need to do is we need to put it in an analyzer. And uh, if you drop it here, it gets sucked into this thing here, and it takes a little while, um, but it's going to analyze this DNA sequence. And when it's done, it will pop out here, and you can see that once it's analyzed, we can see in uh, orange writing there what the trait is, okay? So you're going to need to pick which trait that you want. Um, so there's a plant type. Um, there's a uh, apiarist type, so slower production, rain tolerance. Um, let's take this temperature tolerance one out here. So we know what it is, and now we need to put it inside a sequencer. And the sequencer takes a solid 15 minutes to uh, sequence this crap. Um, what you do is you put in your uh, DNA sequences over here and uh, drop it in here, and slowly more and more letters will start to appear. You can mouse over it, and it says that it's partially sequenced. It's 34% done. Um, this one, I never even threw it in the analyzer first. You can do that, but it's not very wise since this takes so long. You really want to know what they are before you throw them inside a sequencer. Um, and it will take a really long time and a lot of power, and it will also use this stuff um, called fluorescent dye. And I actually think I neglected to say that this uses DNA dye over here. So that's where you put your DNA dye. Um, you put your fluorescent dye down here, and this will slowly sequence these, and we have a bunch of blank sequences. Now, once this is done, um, basically, you, you see how there's nothing left on these now? They've, they become wiped out. It's the same as these. So you dump them back in here, and uh, you didn't lose anything. You, they were simply added to your, um, to your gene bank, which is pretty cool. Um, so I don't think any flowers have finished yet. Um, let me see. This is an arborist one, so hopefully before this tutorial is over, this will have finished, and we can see that we'll, we'll, we'll have added um, something inside this tab right here. But you have all of your different things, so we already have a temperature tolerance, um, none. Um, you can scroll through here. you got a little search bar, search, search bar here, so you can search for uh, different stuff. Um, let me see. I'm not sure. Yeah, normal. Okay, so you, got, you can't search for this. you got to search for what it actually is. Um, so that's awesome there. Now, what do you do once you have these things in your gene bank? Well, you take your empty serum vials, vials and uh, you cannot take a stack of these and click. It will not do anything. You need to take a single serum vial and you need to click on the trait that you want um, to use to inoculate a different uh, larva. So we're going to take this. Let's say we want to make an imperial species. We're going to um, left click here and it's going to be an apiar serum species imperial, okay? And uh, if we did that with temperature tolerance, it would look like that. Um, let's scroll down here and do pollination, okay? And depending on the um, type of uh, gene that you do, it's going to be a different color. So bees are all yellow here, okay? So that's how you use your gene bank. Um, this is probably one of the, the best additions to the mod is that you can do this. Um, you can also um, take these empty serum arrays and you can put in multiple genes. So if you want to do a species, um, imperial species with this fertility normal, this here, um, and let's grab, we're going to do this here, and we're going to assign this here, okay? So you can take like one of each of the different traits and put it inside this, this serum array, okay? And if you shift um, mouse over, it will show you all the different things that you've uh, put into it there. So these serum arrays are really cool. They're more expensive, but it definitely makes the process later on a little bit faster. All right, now we're going to go ahead and, and make some raw DNA. And in order to make that, we're going to need a gene pool. Now the gene pool, like the isolator down there, which I forgot to mention, needs um, ethanol. So we're going to pump, we're going to pipe in some uh, ethanol inside of here. We're going to power the machine up. We're going to put some bees um, inside of here or uh, whatever you want. Uh, we're going to throw some enzymes down here, so we're going to put those enzymes to uh, good use, and then we're going to uh, make this DNA, and this is going to um, have a tooltip that's going to go across here. It's going to squish up these bees and put it inside this little internal uh, fluid storage buffer here, and we are going to get raw DNA. Now, what are we going to use it for? We are going to use it in the polymerizer. Now, raw DNA along with the polymerizing bacteria um, along with one of our uh, serum arrays, or just plain serums, is going to polymerize. Now, what does that even mean? Well, what's happening here is that the charges in this are slowly building up. So as this nears the end here, um, you see this has got 11 charges. It's going to go up by one charge for every completion of this cycle here, up to a maximum of 16 charges. So you can see that this one here is a humidity tolerance of 16, or uh, that's just what it is, and it has 16 charges. And if I mouse over this, we're going to see in just one second, 
there it is, it's up to 12, the process starts over again. So that's going to use your polymerizing bacteria, power, raw DNA, and uh, this is just a little buffer to put all of your serums in. Now, you can make this process go faster if you put golden nuggets in here, which is what I have here, and it's got a little uh, kind of liquid gold buffer there. Um, so when that runs out, the process will slow down. I'm pretty sure it doubles the speed. So this is probably something you are going to want to use in the polymerizer. Next, we're going to use that bacteria vector and finally inoculate something. Now, let's just talk about bees real quick. This is going to be where your larva come into, come into play. So you're going to need the alveary. You're going to need to get that larva. And uh, like I said, you can't inoculate a, um, a princess or drone, but you can inoculate the larva. So we have a meadows. Um, serum here and you can see that this is going to slowly 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 again it takes freaking forever to get to the end here and uh, it's always 100% successful um, this is going to inoculate this forest larva and it's going to turn it into a metals larva okay now other things that you can do inside the inoculator and uh, if somebody does know the answer to this I really do sincerely apologize for not having it um, but I personally don't I guess care enough to really dig for it. Um, the process of inoculating butterflies and um, flowers is a little bit lost on me here, but I will tell you how to inoculate trees, which is pretty easy. Basically, you're going to need the alveary sieve, and inside the sieve you're going to need to put in some uh, some silk mesh stuff. I forget the name of it right offhand, but that's going to collect pollen, and the pollen in turn is going to be able to, let me see, let me grab some here, is going to, let's say, sweet chestnut pollen. You're going to be able to put that up here. And this is what you're going to have to use to inoculate. You can't use saplings. Again, it all works the same thing. The bees are, are no different than anything else. Um, you're not going to be able to inoculate saplings directly. You need pollen. And I kind of have it set up here so you can understand. I th I think this is the order of, um, of flower for botany. So you're going to need dandelion pollen. I'm not sure how to get it. Someone please throw that in the comments below. Um, I'll like it. I'll get to the top and maybe throw in the, in the description. Um, and this will in turn give you um, this germling here. And then you plant that and then it grows into a dandelion. And then this stuff right here, which again, I don't even know why you'd want to um, do this to butterflies, but it is an option. This is what you're going to need to uh, do butterflies. And you're going to put that up there. And the um, order seems to be these. I'm pretty sure you can catch these like in the world crawling around and they're impossible to see. Um, but there you go. There's your order for the butterflies. Someone can throw information about that in the comments. But anyways, um, so you're going to inoculate this guy here. And once this is inoculated, it's going to come down here. It's going to look like a, um, a meadows larva. And I'm just going to yank this out of here. And uh, we are going to finally get the last step of this. Hello, Captain Jack. There we go. Semi-final. So we're almost done with this whole process here. So we've inoculated our, let's say, our forest larva. And we've inoculated it with a whole bunch of different things from our serum array. So we've given it slow pollination and no humidity tolerance. You're going to need this back there, this growth medium, an incubator, and you're going to throw it inside there. And then the incubator is going to incubate it into a brand spanking new bee. And this is completely random as far as I understand. There is no like progress bar or anything. Just eventually it just hatches magically into a drone and... Uh, we will see what happened, and we'll see it happen in a second. Hold on. All right, so there we go. We have our forest drone, and we have successfully inoculated a larva with some different traits, and we have birthed ourselves a new bee. And there we go. Got our forest drone. Now, I call this the semifinals because game's not over yet. You still got one possibly big, long step to go through before you actually get a pure princess and drone of the species that you actually want. Okay. You have one of three options, the way I see it here. What you can do is you can take your newly formed, let's say, um, let's let's say we got refined. We've gotten all the way to refine, which probably took like four months to do. Um, and uh, we want to take this refined drone that we've made that has, let's say, a whole bunch of super qualities, and we want to make a refined princess and drone combination. So we want to basically replicate this and get a whole bunch of them going so that we can start making fuel. Um, you can either Take your refined drone and breed it with the previous princess, which is generally a bad idea because you don't really want to lose, you know, your princesses, especially this far along in the game. Okay, you can take them together and breed them up and possibly, you know, take the chance or take the risk of losing the refined quality to oily. 
and then you're back at square one, which basically means everything that you've already done up until this point is was for nothing, and now you have to start the process all over again and re-inoculate another larva, and so on and so forth, which takes a very long time. So that's one option. Another option is that you can take your refined drone and breed it with, let's say, a mundane. Okay, so actually we got very lucky here. Let's see if we... Um, I've done this a bunch of times already, and it hasn't worked out yet this way. So let's see. We got refined oily and uh, probably the same thing here. Yep, so we got some hybrids. Put them together. Um, we'll see what they come out with. Um, but yeah, the other option is that you can throw it in with, like, let's say, a mundane um, princess, like uh, um, meadows, forest, rocky, something like that, and uh, take your chances with that. Um, the that's not really ideal either because again you, you run the same risk here of basically losing your desired traits so I think the best thing that you could do at this point is once you have the the drone that you want <clears throat> assuming that you see there I lost I lost it out of the, the queen or the princess once you have um, let's say uh, an oily and Mm, yeah, we're gonna go with we're gonna go with oil. Let's say you have an oily princess and drone going, and they're pumping out loads of drones. Um, let them go. Build up a lot of drones. You're gonna have a lot of mundane drones, but you know, let them go. They're gonna have to breed together for a long time. And then what you kind of need to do is just make this thing called like a like a purification bank. Basically, you have a bunch of rocky princesses, which I'm assuming you'll have the most of if you have any kind of quarry down in your world. Load up your drones inside of here and then automate these things so that the rocky princess is constantly being smashed back with the um, with the refined drones so eventually I mean chance it, there's there's no possible way that this rocky queen is eventually not going to turn into a, um, a refined queen and there's no way that it's not going to be a pure refined queen at the end of this whole process so this is the best recommendation I have do this it doesn't have to be this long. Uh, make sure you automate it. You can do it pretty easily with Ender IO, um, or you can use those those gates. Um, I prefer this way much better. Um, just have uh, one of these set to mode extract, always active, and then the one that puts the princesses back in and the drones will be priority. Um, anything basically higher than zero, and then all the byproducts and extra things will be priority zero over here. So that's a quick way to automate apiaries. Um, yeah, and then once you do that, you're gonna. That's really the only way to um, to get your your new bees princess is if you have a lot of drones of the same type. <clears throat> now, my overall um, opinion of this mod is that it takes way too much time. Now, it takes a ludicrous amount of time. It's ridiculous in my opinion. Um, between these machines that take, you know, the sequencer takes 15 minutes. I think the inoculator takes even longer, at least 15 to 20 minutes to inoculate one single bee, um, which is why you're definitely going to want to use these these serum arrays. I'm not sure if there's any configs that you can change to make these machines speed up a little bit. I'm not sure if this is even a work in progress at all. Um, but uh, I like Greg Tech, but this is, you know, this is ridiculous. A little bit ridiculous anyways. Um, but I like bees. I wouldn't have made a seven episode long bee thing if I didn't. And uh, I do like this mod. There's a lot of good, good, neat things that I like inside of it, especially um, this here, I, I love I love these empty serum arrays. I love the fact that you can uh, store all of your things inside of of here. That eliminates the need to have you know vials of crap all over the place. So this is very good. Love it. Um, but form your own opinion on the mod. Um, and uh, that's it for this tutorial. Um, this is Captain Jack. You can check us out on our social uh, media outlets listed here. Leave a comment in the comments below. Start a discussion about this mod and uh, maybe maybe we can shorten these times a little bit if uh, if the mod author sees it. That's it guys. Stay poised.